Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I'm going to show you how you can build a door or window alarm. Now this is a nice uh, beginner's project. It's not very difficult, but um, really good thing about it is it's practical. There's you can use this. Now I have this set up right now for only with one sensor for like a door or window. But um, when we get over to looking at the schematic, how this is put together, I'll show you, you can add more. And uh, you can add a lot more. Now, um, I'm powering this off a battery pack, but normally um, you probably want to use a wall wart. And also, I have the sensor. And what I'm using is a um, photo interrupter. Now, you can also use those uh, magnetic... Oh, I forget the full name of them, but that's a magnetic sensor for windows and doors that are commonly used in burglar alarm stuff. Those can be used as well. And once again, once we get to the schematic, I'll show you how to do that. So what we'll do here is we'll take a quick look. First, um, I'll show you it working. Now I'll open it up and show you what's inside here. Then we'll go over to the computer, look at the schematic, and then we'll take a look at the sketch for the Arduino board because we are using our, an Arduino as the brains for this. So let me turn the power on. We'll give it just a moment for everything to load up. All right, it should be good to go. So what you would do is you would put this photo interrupter on your window frame or your door frame. And then on the door or window, you'd want um, something that light does not pass through. So if the window is opened up or the door is opened, you can hear the alarm going off. Then when it's covered, it shuts off. Now this is just a basic little alarm. I mean, this is something for if you're at home and you just want to know if, you know, maybe you want to put it on a closet door or refrigerator or something like that so you know if your little kid opens it up and it's not supposed to be in there. This is really good for that. Um, burglar alarm, I guess, you know, if you had it on your door, it you know, it, it would let you know when it was open. And if you put a louder alarm on there, it would probably wake you up, but... There's lots of applications for the use of this. And like I said, you can add more. And I've got this on a short um, connector here. But if you wanted to run this further away from the control box, the sensor, <coughs> telephone line or ethernet cable is extremely cheap. <coughs> Excuse me. And works perfect for this. So that's what I would suggest using. Then you don't have to have the alarm box, you know, right next to the sensor. All right, let me turn the power off, get the battery out of the way. I'll open up, show you the inside quick, and then we'll go over to the computer and take a look at the schematic. Now I'm just using a little speaker as you can see here um you could use an old car alarm the horn um that generates the loud volume you could use that as well if you use one of those with this the programming would be slightly different but um most of the rest of it would be the same <clears throat> as you can see I opened it up here and that's what we got inside i'm using an arduino nano and you could use pretty much any Arduino. If you were going to be using this and had a ton of sensors, say you were going to wire your entire house so you'd know if any window was opened or any door was opened, then you'd probably want to go with something like a Mega because they got tons and tons of inputs. But, um, all right, you can see what it looks like. It all fits in this little control box. So um, let's go over to the computer and we'll look at the schematic because that'll be easier to show you on the schematic on um, how this is all assembled. So I'll catch you there in just a moment. All right, I got the schematic brought up here. 
And as you can see, this is not too difficult uh, of a project. So let's just get right into it here. Uh, of course, we're using an Arduino Nano. And like I said, any Arduino is going to probably work. Um, I prefer the Nanos myself because they're nice and small, but you could use an Uno. If you're going to be hooking lots of sensors to it, um, go for the Mega. They have tons and tons of inputs. And then um, what we're doing is we're powering this. Um, I was using 9 volts. You can use anywhere between about 7 volts and I think it's like 14 volts, something like that. If you're using a wall wart, something that says, you know, somewhere between 7 and 12 will be fine. Because just remember, your wall warts um, actually put off a little more voltage than what they actually say. And just remember to put that to the VN. Unless you're using a 5-volt regulator chip, then you could just connect it right to the 5 volts here. But do not connect the wall wart that says 5 volts here. Because that wall wart is going to be more than 5 volts and it's probably going to fry your Arduino board. All right. Next, of course, we got our speaker. That's right here. And that's connected to digital pin 9. Because we are using tones, so we need a PWM pin. And on the Nano and on the Uno, I know digital pin 9 is a PWM pin. Um, the Mega and some of the other boards, I'm not too sure on, so check into that if you're using a different board. Just make sure it's on a PWM pin, and then you can just change this in the Arduino sketch to correspond to what pin you have it connected to. Next, we have our photo interrupter. That's right here. I'm using an HY810H. Now, I use this one because I got a bunch of them, and they are easy to find. Um, you go eBay, Amazon, lots of places you're going to find them, and they're inexpensive. But you can use pretty much, the way I have this set up and configured, you should be able to use about 80 to 90% of the photo interrupters you're going to come up with. Now, if you've got an old printer or scanner, you could um, tear that apart, and you'll find some photo interrupters in there. And there's videos online um, about that, so... If you want to scavenge the part, check those out. But um, the way I have this configured, pretty much any of the photo interrupters you're going to find will work. Some of them will just be a smaller gap. Some will be a bigger gap between the, um, the LED and a transistor. And that brings us to the next thing. What these two resistors right here are for. I used 220 ohm. You can also use 330. That will work as well. And that'll work with this um, particular model of the photo interrupter. And it should work with most of the others as well. So what we're doing is because we're bringing 5 volts down to the infrared LED. The infrared LED cannot handle the 5 volts. It'll burn it out. A uh, 220 to 330 ohm resistor will bring the current down to where it's not going to burn it out and it'll be plenty bright enough to fully saturate the infrared transistor to allow current to go through. Now, also, this resistor isn't crucial, but I put it in there because some of your smaller photo interrupters can't handle as much voltage as um, this one will. But it still works fine. If you're using the HY810H, you actually have one of these and you're using it, you can skip this resistor or you can put it in. It's not going to hurt anything. I just put it in here because a lot of them that are out there don't quite handle as much voltage as this one does. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, just put it in there if you're not sure. You're going to most likely work. So how this um, works is the, the infrared LED is given off light, and there's a gap between here, and you got your infrared transistor. Well, what you do is you put the photo interrupter on your door frame or window frame, whatever you're putting the sensor on, and then when it's opened, it's pulling out um, whatever. I was using a piece of cardboard, but you're going to want to figure out something you can attach to your door or window so when it's opened, <clears throat> well, when it's closed, it's blocked, so the light's not going through. And then when it's opened, it allows the light 
the infrared light, which you cannot see with your eye. And if you want to check if this is working, use your cell phone camera and you'll see this um, kind of purplish light. The camera will actually see it, but your eyes can't. But then when it's open, what it does is it saturates the transistor's base and allows current to flow through, which goes to digital pin 2, which um, in the sketch here in a moment we'll get to is checking to see if the pin goes high, and that sets off the alarm. Now, when it's closed, when the light's not being allowed to shine across here, we want to have a pull-down resistor because you can get static um, electricity and other things that will give it a false reading and the alarm might go off a little bit here and there occasionally. And what this is doing, and we're using a high level, you want to use about a 10K at minimum. Um, I'd say 100K at max and you'll be fine. Um, just stay between the 10K, 100K. Anything you got between there will work. Maybe slightly less, maybe slightly higher. If that's all you got, yeah, you'll probably be okay. But you got to have a pull down so that you ain't getting false readings. And you want the resistor big enough so when the current is allowed to flow through, it's not dropping it down enough to where digital pin, your digital pin is not reading it as going high. Hope that made sense to you. All right, next. If you want to have more than just the one sensor on there, duplicate this, all of this. Don't run it off the same resistors. You're going to have to add more for each one because if you try to tie it off of these, it's not going to work the way you think. So don't do that. You're just going to have to duplicate all of this Except, instead of going to digital pin 2, you put the next to pin 3, next to 4, 5, and so on and so on. And if you use a mega, you've got a whole bunch of digital pins. And then when we get to the sketch, I'll show you quickly on there how to... It'll be going through and checking to see if a pin goes high. Now, also, I was talking about those magnetic sensors. The magnetic sensor, get rid of these two resistors. And, of course, you ain't going to have the photo interrupter. Bring your voltage off. That goes to one side of the magnetic sensor. The other side will go to digital pin 2. And then just remember to put your pull down, just in case you get static, um, anything like that, to keep um, from getting false readings. So you do still want to keep this. But then you can get rid of them resistors. And, of course, you ain't going to be using a photo interrupter. <coughs> and how the magnetic sensor works is... When your door is closed, the magnet is right there next to the sensor, close to it. So it's working like a relay, and it's keeping it open. When you pull it away, it's allowing it to close and let current flow through. Therefore, your pin will go high. So once again, I hope that made sense to you as well. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment in the description below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Oh, and also, before I forget, the schematic here and the Arduino code that we're going to be getting into in a moment can all be found on the website. You can download it. Um, look in the description below, and you'll find a link to this project's website. And all this will be on there, and a parts list as well. All right, um, I think we've gone over everything on the schematic. So let me pull in here the Arduino sketch itself. And as you can see, there is not much to this at all. All we're doing is we're defining here to start with S1, which is sensor 1. And I shortened it out. And that's the photo interrupter that I have. And of course, it's on digital pen 2. Then I have an integer for reading that. And that's value 1. So I shortened it up V1. Now, if you have more sensors, Duplicate this, just the next one would be S2, and then you probably have it on pin 3. And then, of course, your next integer would be V2, so on and so on. The speaker, that's on pin 9, that's defined. Like I said, if you change what pin you're putting the speaker on, just change this. Um, this zero dot begin, you can actually delete that. Um, I have it in there for testing when you're first building the project. Um, 
it is kind of handy to use the serial to check if it's working, if you're having problems. I just accidentally forgot to remove that before I started this video, but it's not going to hurt anything if you accidentally leave it in there. It's not going to do anything. Then, of course, we're defining the pin modes, and if for any more of the sensors that you connect, just do a pin mode. You know, the next would be S2, make that input, S3. So on the speaker, that's an output. Actually, I don't even think you really needed this, but I put it in there anyway because, well, look at how short this sketch is. So kind of acted as a filler so it wasn't super short. All right, down to the void loop. What we're doing is we're reading the value 1 is equal to digital read sensor 1. And then if you have more sensors just below this, you, know, you do enter and you put V2 equals digital read S2, V3 equals digital read S3, so on and so on. And then after that, you do your if statements. You start with if value 1 equals high. Well, then it does the tone, and that was that uh, alarm tone, and that's it right there. If um, you'd like to mess around with this, just change the 500 and the 1000, the two middle numbers, and that'll give you uh, different pitches of tones. I found the 250 millisecond um, duration sounds pretty good. You can play with that as well. Just remember, whatever duration you set the tone at, do a delay afterwards of the same duration, because if you don't, this tone <clears throat> will start, and then this one will just blast over it, and it won't be a combination of the two. It'll just be this one playing, and it'll just be the constant. It, it won't have the two tone, duh, the alarm sound I was doing. Hopefully that made sense to you. Should. Like I said, any questions, leave a, leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, well, I think this video has gone on long enough. I think we've covered everything. So um, once again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And of course, um, in the description below, you'll find a link to the website where um, you can copy this and paste it right in your Arduino ID. You'll also find the uh, schematic and you can download that to print it out if that'd help you for building the project. Um, no problem with that. Print it out. Do whatever you want. So I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z Hut today. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Big time. So I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.